In this video, you will learn how to color grade footage shot on the Insta360 X3. This is an easy way to stylize your footage and take it to the next level. For best results, I recommend shooting in the log picture profile. Log mode lets your camera shoot with more dynamic range and allows for more freedom when color grading. To find the log mode on your camera, swipe from the right side of your screen and go to the setting at the far left. Then, simply select Log. It is worth mentioning that you can color grade footage shot in standard mode, but it may be more difficult. I will be using DaVinci Resolve to color grade my videos. It is a powerful and free video editor that I highly recommend. Once you have reframed your clip, import it into DaVinci Resolve. Click on this icon to enter the color tab of Resolve. Now don't worry, I know it looks confusing, but the process is actually quite simple. To start, I will make four different nodes. To do this, press Option S on your Mac or Alt S on PC. Repeat this three more times. This will create four of these things in the upper right corner. You can think of these nodes as layers. For the sake of this tutorial, I will label these nodes, but you can skip this step if you want. The first node will control the basic adjustments. The second node will control the style. The third node will be for masking, and the final one will be for a vignette. I will explain all of these later. Before we get started with the actual color grading, I want to mention that some clips are just easier to color grade than others. Since I shot this video in the log mode, the colors are flat and washed out. This node is where we will add contrast and saturation to make the clip look as it did in real life. To start, click on this icon so we can adjust the exposure and the contrast. Specifically, we will be using the curves feature. Let me explain. The left side controls the shadows in your video, and the right side controls the highlights. To add the contrast back in, simply add two points on the line by clicking on it. I'm going to bring the first point down to darken the shadows, and the second point up to brighten the highlights. Since not all videos are the same, try experimenting with your two points to see what looks the best. If your clip is too bright, you may want to bring both points down. Likewise, if it is too dark, you may want to bring both points up. Next, let's add some saturation. To do this, click the color wheel icon. Now, you can increase the saturation until you are satisfied. Here is the video before and after these basic adjustments. Now, my shot looks as it did in real life. We've added the saturation and contrast back in, giving us a more natural look. Now, let's move on to the style node. Click on the style node. This is where you can stylize your footage and modify the colors. Be creative in this step. This is where you can personalize your shots and create your own look. In this example, I use the style node to enhance the sunset, and in this example, I make the red house pop out from its surroundings. Before altering the colors, take a moment to recognize the areas you want to change. Here, I'm going to add hints of teal and orange to make the shot look more cinematic. Since I already have some blues in this dark area and some oranges in this foreground area, it will be easy to create a teal and orange look because the colors are already close to what I want. There are many ways to change the shade of these colors, but I use the color warper. Click on this icon here. Let me explain how this works. The white stuff inside the color warper shows which colors are in your clip. It also shows the saturation. The farther away the points are from the center, the more saturated they are. Now, it is time to alter the colors. Move your mouse over your video. Notice how the dots on the color warper become highlighted depending on where your mouse is located. As you can see, my mouse is over a yellowish section of the video, and the color warper has highlighted a yellowish point. Move your mouse to a color you would like to change. Click and drag your mouse around in a circle to explore how this tool works. Obviously, this looks terrible and you want to make more subtle changes. In this case, I want the oranges to be a bit more red, so I will drag the mouse up and to the right. I will do the same thing for this dark section of the image, but will move it towards teal instead. Here is the video before and after this step. The change is subtle, but in my opinion looks a lot better. A lot of the time, I want to only change a small portion of my image. An easy way to do this is through masking. In this shot, my subject is a little dark, and I want to make him brighter, as he is a major part of the frame. If you don't feel the need to make any local adjustments to your video, you can skip this step and move on to the final one. If you want to use the masking feature, select the masking node and then click on this icon so we can create a mask. I will be using a circular mask because the area I want to select is more or less the shape of an oval. But there is also the rectangular mask, custom shape mask, and gradient mask. 
Click on the mask that best fits what you are trying to select and adjust it as needed. The white points adjust the size and the red points adjust the feather. The feather softens the edges of the mask. All I'm going to do is place my mask over my subject. Then we need to track the mask to the video. Luckily DaVinci Resolve can automatically do it for us. Simply click on the tracker tab and then click this button here to track the mask. Now you can use any of the techniques we discussed earlier to modify the masked area. In this case, I want to increase the brightness as to draw more attention to the person. Here's the before and after. It's worth mentioning that sometimes you may want to use multiple masking nodes. To do this, simply use multiple masking nodes and adjust them accordingly. The final thing I like to do to my videos is add a vignette to darken out the edges and corners of the video. Select the final node and then click Effects to bring up the Effects panel. Click the search button and then search for Vignette. Drag the effect onto your final node. Don't worry, the effect is way too strong right now, but we can adjust it. Bring the size all the way up to 1 to make the vignette smaller. Then, click on the global blend and change it to 0.5. Now, the edges and corners should be slightly darker. This is a subtle way to draw your audience's attention to the center of the video. Feel free to play around with these settings to achieve the look you want. Now, you are finished colorating your video. I know this process may seem intimidating, but my advice is to play around with it and develop your own style. With some practice, you will discover that color grading is an easy way to take your X3 footage to the next level.